Okay, so you have a muscle knot in your back and it's causing you pain and you wanna know what that means. What are muscle knots? What is a trigger point? How do you treat it? What are the procedures that we do for this? All right, my name is Dr. Sater. I am a double boarded pain doctor and neurologist. And in this video, I will be discussing trigger points. I'll go over what a trigger point is and also what the best treatment options for those are. So a trigger point, essentially, what is known as a muscle knot, is an area of a muscle that basically becomes a pain generator. Now, technically, it can happen in any muscle. However, it's more commonly in uh, muscles that are either at a junction of uh, the spine and the shoulder blade, or potentially, you know, muscles that are uh, close to certain anatomical structures. So it's less common, for example, to have a uh, muscle knot in your bicep or in your tricep. It can happen, I've seen it, but it's not very common. Um, it's definitely much more common for it to be in the traps, in the neck muscles, the upper back, the mid back, the low back. Uh, so those are much more prone because of their anatomical location and the neighboring surrounding structures. Okay, so essentially what happens is that for a specific reason, and I'll go over the risk factors in a little bit, the fibers of the muscle become tangled up. So for whatever reason, the fibers of the muscle become all tangled up and twisted on each other and when that happens you cut off the blood supply to that part of the muscle and that's essentially you can think of it like a mini stroke inside that muscle obviously it's not happening in the brain or, or in the heart but it's happening in skeletal muscle but the idea is the same you're cutting off the blood supply so that part of the muscle becomes ischemic and dies and generates pain when that happens it becomes a sore spot now for some people that is because they've had let's say surgery and scarring in that region in the past for other people it's because they have a disc herniation that's leading to inflammation around it and therefore the muscle spasms and then for other patients it could be ergonomics so a lot of stress potentially that's leading to tension and constant spasm in the upper back and neck muscles and cervical press spinals but the bottom line is the same is that you have creation of a trigger point now let's talk a little bit about how these are treated. So obviously you have more conservative approaches like physical therapy, massages, things of that sort, and those are very reasonable to start with. Medications, unfortunately, are not the best approach in these cases because usually when you have a part of the muscle that has a knot in it, a trigger point, essentially uh, that is cut off from the circulation. So if you take a medication, very little bit of that medication will be able to get to that uh, sore spot because the blood flow is cut off, so it's really going more systemically and giving you all the side effects uh, and not so much the benefit. And these side effects tend to be sedation for a lot of the medications. So muscle relaxants like cyclobenzaprine, tizanidine, uh, baclofen, methocarbamol, these are some of the common ones that we use. But you know, some of them are more sedating than others. So cyclobenzaprine tends to be the most sedating of these medications. Methocarbamol, for example, is one of the less sedating ones, but still sedating. And uh, they, they can help sometimes, especially if you have more than one specific trigger point but uh, in general they lead to sedation and a lot of patients don't like that because of their work or for whatever other reason so if we're not doing these medications then what's the best treatment for trigger points one of the best treatments that I found is actually trigger point injections what we call TPI and the idea behind that is that we go in with a needle and with that needle we're going into the part of the muscle that is affected so let's say that you have a trigger point right here we're going in with that needle and then we're going in to break the knot we use ultrasound guidance to see the structures around it and make sure that we're not close to the spine or blood vessels or anything dangerous. And then uh, under ultrasound, we actually go in with that needle and then we break the knot by causing micro trauma in that region. Now, uh, we use local anesthetic like lidocaine or bupivacaine. However, that's not really what's leading to the benefit. The idea is to just make it more tolerable. That's why we use the actual local anesthetic. But the benefit itself is coming from the needle. So the hero in this uh, scenario is actually the needle itself. And uh, by causing micro trauma, we're loosening up the muscle fibers, we're breaking them up, we're dissipating all the built up electrical charge. And we are leading to enough micro trauma that will ultimately lead to more blood flow coming and healing the muscle and the part of the muscle that has been damaged. And so that essentially is it. On the day of the procedure, your provider will check exactly which spots uh, are bothering you. And then usually what I do is I mark them with a, with a surgical marker and then I go in with the ultrasound and the break those knots. And the advantage of the procedure is that it's, uh, it, it doesn't need to have any steroid in it. So there's no cortisone in this. Studies have shown that there's really no added benefit of using steroid and the injectate. Uh, because like I said before, the needle itself is actually doing all the work. So what should you expect? Normally you're gonna have a little bit of a relief the same day of the procedure from the local anesthetic. But then when it wears off, you might feel the pain again for a day or two. And then after usually three to five days is when the real benefit kicks in. 
and that's when you have all the blood flow coming in and all the healing that's gonna happen to the muscle. That's essentially it. In terms of safety, very safe procedure. I will only say that uh, you know it's better to get it done with ultrasound guidance, especially in the mid back and upper back and neck region. That is much safer to see the structures and the lungs and everything and make sure that you're not puncturing any unintended structures. However, it's overall very safe. And again, low risk of bleeding or infection. I've never had that, but that's theoretically something that can happen. And it can be done frequently enough, so every few months, because of the fact that it doesn't have any cortisone in it. I hope you found this video useful. Comment below if there's anything you want to learn more about and uh, have a great day.